Hello and welcome to this exam question video. We're looking at AQA GCSE past papers today and this question here is a five marker and it's asking about circuit training and how it can be used for well, games players in their training. Is it relevant, is it good, or is it bad? And they present this question using this command word here, discuss. Now discuss means both sides of the argument. It's not asking you to finish with your own personal evaluation, it's just asking you to present both sides. And considering the command word and the fact that there's five marks available, we know that this is assessment objective three. This is assessing your understanding, not just of terminology, not just applied to generic anatomy and physiology, but applied within sporting contexts. So it's very important that throughout your answer, you refer to games players, be it a team game or solo game, but these, these generic fitness, quite open, quite competitive type games. So circuit training, we start with what it is. And a nice way to sort of attack any one of these questions is by considering the characteristics of any method of training. And we've got these range of points here. We've got the space it might acquire. We've got the equipment that we might need for it, the knowledge that you might have, the numbers that can actually participate in it, the components of fitness that we can target inside of the training, the skills that we require to actually complete the activity. So if it was continuous, for example, can everyone run? The majority of people can. Can the majority of people cycle? Yes, the majority of people can. But can people perform skipping? Can people perform plyometric training? Can they perform you know, multiple repetitions of gymnastics skills? Probably not. So the, the skill level of the skill, the motor skill level of a performer can determine you know, the relevance of a method of training. The cost involved, be it the space or the equipment that's required, and then the intensity. How hard is the training session? What sort of recovery periods might be required post-training? So. Considering all of these factors, and if we apply it to circuit training, that would be enough for AO1 and AO2. But we need to make sure that we are making this answer relevant for games players. What we'll do is look at some pros and some cons, because you have to look at both sides, and look at the features of the training method and how it applies to games players. So we'll start off with space. Now circuit training, if we're using equipment, tying it into the second point there as well, so space and equipment, if we are using equipment, then it's going to be taking up a little bit more space if we're laying it out in a big area. If we're using minimal, minimal equipment or no equipment, then we might be able to complete this circuit in one place. Apply that to games, then it's a good thing because we can have the whole team, the whole squad, completing a no equipment, lack of space circuit because they can all just have their zone and they complete the same exercises one after the other in a Tabata or in a, uh, a circuit method of training but it's all on the same spot, on the same gym mat, they just change the exercise, they don't change the space in which they're in. Knowledge. A good thing about circuit training is that we could we could make this as hard or as easy as possible. We could use specialist knowledge or we could use bog standard movements available to anyone. So the knowledge in order to carry this out isn't really restrictive. So for games players, they might not need to have a coach, they might need to have a personal trainer talk them through this method of training. PNF or plyometric, that's a little bit higher in the required understanding in order to execute that method of training. But for circuit training, so long as a player knows how to run, how to jump, how to do star jumps, how to do press ups, how to do sit ups, you know, these gross motor skills, they'd be able to run it all by themselves. So that's another positive. The numbers. Once a circuit training has been planned, it can be given to as many different players as needed. So if, a, let's say, a coach or the captain or whoever has planned a series of 10 exercises, which can all be done in limited space, which can all be done with lack of equipment, it can be given to infinite numbers of people. And they can go off and do it whenever, wherever. So it can be very individualized. On the other hand, if we were to use larger pieces of equipment, perhaps larger pieces of specialist equipment, then we might need to go somewhere such as a gym. And a gym might be capped in how many people can go there, especially if we're talking grassroots level. Perhaps the elite level, they might have their own specialist gym, their own facility, so numbers and space won't be an issue if they are required to use specialist equipment. But for your average team, your grassroots level team, a club might have some equipment, but would they have enough for a whole squad to actually complete that circuit training? Perhaps not. 
Next we have the components of fitness that are being tested. So with circuit training, because of its nature of one exercise and another exercise and another exercise, quite often we have to hit a wide range of components of fitness. If we were to focus in on one, one after the other, like speed for example, and to go from sprinting into sprinting into speed work into maximal work into speed work, that's going to lead to overtraining, it's going to leave, lead to injury. And for games players, now that's, a, that's a negative because overtraining or injury could inhibit them from playing or competing in their actual competitive match. However, because circuit training does, it does allow for this you know, mixture of different components of fitness to be hit, flexibility, then speed, then strength, then power, then balance, it's good for generic fitness. So general fitness, which all games players require, can, can be improved. Now the downside to that is it's not this, it's not a specialist type of training. It's not going to see rapid improvements in one particular component of fitness, which, depending on the game, could, could impair their performance. Next, we have skills. Now often circuit training is gross motor skill based. Star jumps, squats, sit-ups, press-ups. A performer never really uses those specific gross motor skills in a sporting context. So the downside is they're practicing movements which haven't really got much relevance to their, to their competitive gameplay, where they might actually need to have equipment such as a tennis racket or a basketball, or perhaps in rugby where they have opponents which they need to you know, work out their directions in order, to, you know, in order to complete a run or a move. So circuit training is quite restricted and closed off from other stimulants such as opponents, such as the pace of matches. So it's good, for it's good for general fitness, it's good for developing wide ranges of components of fitness, but not sport specific. Unless, of course, there is the equipment and there's the specialisms where the coach can bring enough equipment in for everyone to be using it. But if we use circuit training in its traditional sense of do one station, move on to the next, move on to the next, we're not really in the competitive environment of the correct lines, the correct distances, the correct amount of pressure, the correct amount of fatigue, the correct amount of you know, spatial proximity to teammates, for example. And then intensity. Now, a good thing about components of fitness, sorry, not components of fitness, a good thing about circuit training is that it is very easily modifiable. So the coach or the captain or the, the players involved in the training method, they can actually select how hard they want to work. They can plan from the ground up what stations they include, what heart rate are they trying to get into. And because of that, it's great for all games players to work on anaerobic work and aerobic work. So we've gone through a wide range there of positives and negatives. And on the whole, many of these features could be presented as a positive or a negative. So in your exam question, so long as you state the, the factor that you're about to discuss and then apply it to a games player and it's noteworthy, you know, if it carries some weight, if it's logical, then you're going to pick up your AO3 marks. But you need to be applying it for games players. Don't just talk about what circuit training is and some possible benefits or drawbacks. You need to be applying it to games players. So circuit training is good because it can be done without any equipment in very limited space, which is good because a game, a game player squad is likely to be large, so all of them can be training at one time. If you were to go down the route of, well, circuit training can require lots of, lots of space, it can require lots of specialist equipment, therefore it's unlikely the whole squad will be able to complete it at the same time. So it's not so much a written in stone answer, it's more can you frame it in a way that makes sense for the question. So circuit training, consider the factors that, the, or that make circuit training what it is and, and, the, and the various variables that could change and then apply it into the games player situation to make it make sense for you. Looking at the pros and looking at the cons. For discuss, you don't necessarily need to have an evaluation, you just need to present both sides of the argument so then a coach or whoever can then use both sides of the argument to come up with their own solution, their own evaluation from what you've presented them. So that's that. I hope that helped a little bit. It's a slightly different exam question from others. There's no clear cut answer. Obviously the mark schemes for these will give you a certain list of, of responses that you could give 
But just bear in mind that so long as you can frame it in a way that makes sense for the question, you're going to be picking up the marks. So hope that helped, and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.